Do you think that human beings have like a heightened aesthetic um, capacity than any other creature we know? I mean, is that yeah, is that course. safe to assume? Yeah, I mean, there we have we have examples of certain creatures that we can see pay very close attention to aesthetics in certain contexts. Okay, yeah. Um, but it's a very limited context. Yeah. You know, so we have bower birds yeah. that, you know, build these elaborate, strange yeah. altars to nobody knows what. And if there's one thing we can say, it's that the female bower birds are paying very close attention to they, the details. They must be very critical. There must be like, it must take like an exceedingly critical female to cause a male to go to those lengths. Well, it gives me great pleasure to say this next thing to you, Benjamin. Um, I think there there are cases, and probably if you were to look for places, you know, there's this postmodern view that science is all garbaged up by the fact that it's been overwhelmingly practiced in the West by white men. Yeah. And that that means that effectively the content is biased. And this is has almost no truth to it with something like the periodic table, which there's not, there's nothing good about the fact that it was, you know, elucidated by primarily white men, but the point is what they elucidated was actually true. So it would have been elucidated by whoever did the elucidating. In biology, because the complexity is so high and the questions mm. are so strange, mm. there is actually room for us to have missed things because people with certain backgrounds did the studying and their biases caused them to overlook the darndest stuff. Mm. And so I do think there's a way in which, you know, we look at bowerbirds and because it has been um, largely male evolutionary biologists trying to do the explaining, there's been this bizarre tendency to, to you know, okay, why do the males do this crazy behavior? Well, the females require it of them. Well, why do the females require it of them? You know, who knows? <laughs> females, you know, heck. Um, and it's not true. I, I think that we will very shortly come to understand that these females have been absolutely obsessed about something that is so important but hard to elucidate so we've missed why you know the peacock looks the way it does we know that it's because the female requires the peacock to do this display or she won't mate but what we haven't gotten to is why the females require this and why all of these systems in which females require males to demonstrate some very unusual um, capacity have evolved the way they do. And I think the shocker is going to be that there was no frivolousness in what these females were requiring of males at all. This was not a aesthetic choice for its own purpose. This aesthetic choice um, was nature's way of asking deep questions about what that male's genome was capable of enduring in the future. And when we come to see that, I believe we will have a good laugh over the fact that, yes, indeed, male evolutionary biologists overlooked the obvious for an awful long time. <laughs>